Hi and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to talk through Trading 212 and what is going on in my portfolio. Anybody who has seen anything over the last week will have seen that the markets have managed to go on a bit of a rise. We've seen CPI figures coming in just under that 8% so we've dropped from 8.7 down to 7.9 and as a result of that we saw basically a reversal of the FTSE 100 which had dropped from about 7,500 points down by about 3.5% but on that news on Thursday, we saw a bit of a rise take off. That's changed my portfolio somewhat. I was, I must admit, quite red right up in the lap point and then things have sort of taken off. Are we out of the woods with all of this inflation? interest rates i don't quite think so i think we're potentially going to get another bit of a rise in interest rates in the next bank of england meeting i think is the 3rd of august so we'll be having a look to see what is going on at that stage do we see a further 25 basis points i think we probably do and if that is the case where do we manage to finish some analysts suggesting it's going to be somewhere in around that 5.5% and then potentially we see something else cooling off a little bit next year. But without any further ado, let's jump over on Trading 212. But first of all, just thanks very much for whoever signed up on Trading 212 uh, using my link. There's one down below. Um, Hopefully you got a good share. I managed to get a, a, a partial share of Moe, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton. So that's coming in at about £12 that I got on that. So thanks very much. What's going on within the ISA? So you'll have seen that I've moved about £20,000 over from an old ISA into this one. And so far I've invested about 8500 and I've got about 14000 still to invest. And there's about £800 on orders, which we'll talk through in a second. Let's have a quick look at some of the investments. So I've just been trickling in and sort of pound cost averaging into different positions as I sort of see a bit of bit of uh, value coming in. What does this now look like? And I now have about 15 different shares in here, but I also have some ETFs and you'll remember, and we'll have a quick look at it in a second, uh, I have a, an ETF pie and I have a monthly dividend pie. It doesn't very often look like this. Just have a look at how green all of my positions are. Let's have a quick look and see what we actually have in here. So we'll just take a quick rundown through, see how some of them are getting on, and then have a look and see what the two different pies are actually looking at. So British American Tobacco, I have been building up a position. I'm probably gonna stop somewhere in around this point because I've got, I'm trying to build several of these stock holdings up to that £1,000 marker, um, but it is up top 3%, which I'm very happy about. Uh, DS Smith still need to start building this position out, but currently up about 7.13%. I do have two renewables in here, so I've got Green Coat and I've also got Trig. Just starting to build those up, and Green Coat is coming in with a dividend of approximately 5.51. So we'll just keep adding to that. And probably over the two of those stocks have about a thousand pounds invested into those. I'm trying to build out and make sure that I have diversification within this uh, monthly dividends. And I actually add to that by having the iShares uh, UK dividend ETF, which is coming in at just a touch over 6% dividend yield. And what I quite like about that is that's paying me quarterly. GSK, another one of those quarterly paying dividend stocks. And if you want to have a quick look, I'll drop a video down where I actually talk through how you could build a monthly paying dividend portfolio by just investing in three FTSE 100 stocks. And actually, I've got a couple of those in here. Uh, Bats is one off from GSK is another. IG Group, 
uh, have been starting to buy into this and it's up nearly 9%. Um, what I'm a little bit annoyed about is I was trying to get into ICP as well, uh, just to have that diversified financials, um, but I haven't quite managed to come in at the point that I wish to come in at. Looking at legal in general, another one of those stable dividends that I like to try and buy into and it's paying a whopping 8.25%. Have a look at this video where I talk about some other companies that have got an 8% plus dividend. But when we are investing into dividends, we just want to, don't want to just chase that really high dividend yield because sometimes that is a dividend trap. You buy into it and then you find that they do pull or reduce their dividends. Make sure you go and do some due diligence. On the banking side of things, I'm not going to massively buy into banking at the moment. I think the whole increase in the interest rates and the mortgage hikes that have been going on, potentially there is a little bit of doubt and, and sort of worry on investing into the banking sector. I'll just pick that up through some of the ETFs that I have. PHP up 4% and that's another one of those quarterly dividend paying companies that are paying me a dividend yield of circa 6.75%. Real the income, I've built up this position and this is the monthly dividend payer and it just continually keeps paying me money. And there you go dividend this month and that's coming in at about £2.51. I have added another uh, couple of stocks to that holding recently and Sainsbury's also paying me a £2.30 during this month. Taylor Wimby, the building company, is the one that pulls in over 14% increase. I'm really pleased to see that. I do have a, an order sat there just waiting to be filled um, when the, the price comes down a little bit, which I think it probably will do. And then Vodafone at the other end is down 12% still. I'm going to just keep an eye on that and see whether or not the, the debt issues with Vodafone uh, sort of in, improve slightly uh, before I start adding to it. But what I will do, you'll see a number of ETFs in there. I'm just going to jump across, have a quick look at this pie, um, which is up 3.68% and most of that is being driven by the growth in the US market at the moment. We'll wait and see what effect some of the earnings calls uh, will have. You've had Netflix and you've had Tesla coming in, a little bit disappointing, and you've seen things like the NASDAQ drop about 2% over, over the last uh, few trading days. Some more big fang companies coming in, so you've got Meta and Alphabet coming in with their earnings calls shortly. We'll see what kind of effect that has on the US economy and some of these uh, ETFs, such as the, the S&P 500 VUSA. Also got the FEM, China hasn't quite performed in the way that we had hoped. Let's wait and see whether or not there, there is some more growth there coming up. But I think I'm going to start adding, just trickling in and pound cost averaging into these four ETFs. Because as you may be aware, I just trickle 250, 300 pounds in a month or whatever I can afford. And it automatically just goes in and tops up these four ETFs. Also got the UKE in there. That's up a little bit and also looking at the FTSE Developed Europe X UK and once again it is up slightly. That's basically how things are sat. Let's just have a quick look at, at the figures. So the ETF pie is up 3.68% at just under £2,000 and I'm building up that monthly dividend and looking at that, that's approaching the £7,000 Mark. I won't be adding hugely more to that monthly dividend one. So what I am looking at in that monthly dividend pie is how do I increase this dividend payout? And this also pulls in a few other investments that I have sat on things like Invest Engine and still sat on Vanguard. But next year I'm almost at that £800 figure. And what I'm trying to do is first Firstly, looking at having an average of about £100 per month 
coming through in dividends and then starting to reinvest that into the next company that is coming up with a decent ex-dividend date and start that whole snowballing compounding effect compound interest effect and grow the dividends as we move on. Hopefully you find that of some use. Why don't you have a quick look at one of these two playlists that will give you some ideas for dividend stocks or dividend ETFs. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.